Good evening. Today is April 9th, 2022. I'm Robert Crescioni. I'm John Gatzis. Welcome to the show tonight. We are in the 73rd week of the globalist woke insurrection in this country. And I have just one question for the audience tonight, and that is, are you better off now than you were a year and a half ago? Think about that for a minute. You know, we didn't have this rampant inflation a year and a right. half ago. Right. We didn't have all of the uh, nonsense going on with the, 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 well, we did have a lot of that nonsense with the woke yeah, crowd going we on. Yeah, we still did. But we didn't have the mean tweets. <sighs> yes, we did have the mean tweets. But you know what? I kind of enjoyed those. Right. Uh, I right. really didn't have a problem with them. And, you know, I would, uh, well, that's just like Katanji Brown, mm -hmm. Katanji Jackson Brown, who was just nominated, who was just confirmed, confirmed to the Supreme Court, to sit on the Supreme Court. You know, I am furious. I am really insulted because they put her there for two reasons and two reasons alone. One, she's black. Right, check box. Two, she's a woman. Right, check box. Now, well, but now, well, well, well but, she, but she's not a biologist, so does she even know she's a woman? Well, I don't know. How I'm do not we, sure how, about how that. How do we really? How do we know? I mean, all that seems rather um, nebulous at this point to me. I mean, Biden said well, he was going to name a woman. It's like, well, what do you mean by that? Well, yeah. like, can you define it? Yeah. I, I thought you had to be a biologist to, uh, uh, well, to, to make that definition. Evidently, so. that's a new standard. I don't know. I'm not aware of that because, you know, I grew up on a farm and it was pretty easy to tell, you know, gender out there. Right. But for the you know, record, I mean, when they asked her that question, all she had to say was a human adult female. Exactly. That's the definition exactly. of a woman. Exactly. For legal purposes, for common sense purposes, for any purposes, folks. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, seriously? I, I agree. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely insulted by that. And, and before anybody gets in a wad here, I don't give a fat rat that she's black. Right. I don't give a fat rat she's a woman right what I care about is the fact that neither of those qualities indicate judicial prowess they don't they don't indicate any character and the one thing issues. that would have maybe given us a clue as to her innate judicial prowess were her LSAT scores which they wouldn't release I, I wonder why that is yeah yeah you know it, it just infuriates me this is the essence of peak insanity that, that's right peak insanity that's right uh look like we got a call so that that, that, that tripped someone's trigger yeah. so let's see uh thanks for well oh. they decided they didn't want to make their point i don't know either call that, us back uh, that, you know, a very good imitation of a dial tone <laughs> <laughs> One of the two. You know, don't be afraid if you if you think that it's offensive that I'm offended by the fact that they picked her on gender and race. Right. Then certainly call me. I don't have a problem with you well, telling me and, that I'm wrong on that. To be honest but with I, you, I'm not going to agree with you. You know, I mean, of course, were I in her shoes, I'd be happy I got there any way I could get there. I mean, I, you know, well, I mean that's how promotions work and all. Right. But if I were a member of a group that she was purporting to represent. Okay, yeah, in my heart of hearts, I would feel a little, you know, insulted that, okay, she's there because they feel like they have to pick somebody who fits these, these various categories, yeah. you know, black or female, yeah. you know, without, and basically what they're saying is we're going to disregard all the people who may be, you know, she may be the best qualified, but she may not be. Well, you know what? You know, if she was the best qualified, make that case. Well, and they, I'd be more than happy to listen to well, that. Well, and of course, they would argue that, and I think it's patently contradictory to the traditions and, and, and the merit-based uh, traditions of, of, you know, the society. They would say, well, you can't, you can't, you can't disregard her race and sex. That is one of the integral factors that she brings to bear uh, in rendering judgments about things. And to that I say, you know, baloney. Okay, that's nonsense. She needs to be able to, I mean, the idea of, of rule by law is that you judge solely based on the interpretation and application of that law. Okay, regardless of any of these external immutable characteristics that people have. Mm -hmm. So. I, I just, I, I reject out of hand their underlying philosophical basis on which they pick these people and insist that these unimportant consequences, like you said, I don't care what she is. Yeah. I mean, in the context of this particular nomination, I, said, well, I don't care who he nominates, whoever it is is going to be some kind of, you know, communist type. I mean, well, it's going to be some kind of hard left-wing, right. 
uh, ideologue. So I don't care whether it's black, white, transgender, or any of these things. The rulings are going to be predictable. Yes, okay? they will. And if they had, if 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 his if Biden's pick had been some blue-eyed Scandinavian male, I can promise you he'd still be just every bit of a of a woke ideological left-wing guy. So it really wouldn't matter. You're right. So on on in that sense, it really doesn't matter. Right. Well, we, we knew that he was going to appoint someone or nominate someone just like he uh, nominated communist mm -hmm. to the Federal Reserve. I mean communist. So no, that's, not just a, that's just not us being hyperbolic here. I mean, that literally, this is someone yeah. who was, was, was educated in the Soviet Union and, um, and, and, whose, and yep. whose thesis papers were extolling the virtues of Marxist economic theory. Yep and who never really renounced any of that, these are the kinds of people that are being uh, uh, floated and nominated. Fortunately, some of them, we still have some tiny, you know, infinitesimally small vestige of, of common sense in, mm -hmm. in uh, the Senate, and some of these people are getting, getting flushed. Well, they should. Yeah, and she's they one should. of them that did. She yeah. and I think uh, Sarah Bloom Raskin for similar reasons. Well, speaking of flushing, we need to flush some of these senators out. Absolutely. You know, the, these yeah. uh, Olympia Snow, uh, Lisa Murkowski. Right. They need to go. Susan Collins. Susan, Co Co Susan Collins. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, Susan they're Collins. interchangeable. Yeah, well, they I are. I mean, you know. Not right. Uh, but, Recycled. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a recycle well, of Olympia Snow. Well, if you look at the entire Biden administration, they're all rejects who were recycled from the Obama all administration Obama and prior. That's right. And if they weren't rejects from the Obama administration, they were rejects from the Bush administration. That's right. You know, a few of those slip in here and there as well. But yeah, it's hard not to have contempt for the entire it, political it, class. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. You know, if you look around, if you look at the situation we're in right now, mm -hmm. we have rampant inflation. We have fuel prices that are through the roof. Right. You go to the grocery store and pick up a couple bags of groceries, and it's $85. Right. What are eggs now? Something like four sixty nine a dozen? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Milk is through the roof. We have calls to completely shut off the fossil fuel industry. Right. And then they claim that it's the oil companies that are the, that are the reason that prices are high. I mean... Yeah. And if it's not the oil really, companies, it's Putin. Really? Somebody, please... Are you buying this stuff? I mean, are, are you, you buying these explanations? Is anybody, you know, really believing any of this? Or are you just saying, you know what, I hope we get past this and, and, and I have enough, you know, money to buy some food? Because, That's a good question because, yeah. you know, I, I know that we have people who are going out there right now reciting the, the typical line from CNN and MSN that yeah. this is all Putin's fault. We wouldn't have any of this inflation if it wasn't Putin's well, fault. Well, which even a lot of the, the left-wing organs are, are saying, yeah, that's not yeah. right. I mean, you can, you can track fuel prices exactly. well before the Ukraine war erupted. Well, we've shown the charts on here. Yeah. You know, yeah. they were going up when it looked like Biden was a shoe-in. Right. When they, when they felt that they had in place a sufficient corruption of the voting system right. to, put, to usher an old, that old semi-senior individual that's man right. in, fuel prices started rising that's because right. they knew that on day one he was going to do what he did, well, and that was to shut down the fossil fuel industry. He said on the campaign, I'm going to shut down the fossil fuel industry. And he yes, even he talked did. about, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, fossil fuel executives should be, should be in prison. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a host of woke idiots, and I'm going to call them idiots because they are. It's kind of redundant, but yeah. <laughs> Calling for an end to fossil fuel today. Right. We're not doing enough. Well, uh, I just happen to have some numbers here, so let's, let's go ahead and let's talk about that. We'll, about we'll change up the schedule here I'm just a, a little guy. bit. Yep. All right. Well, I was reading an article today, and wind and solar have broken the 10% threshold on electricity demand. Okay. Now, let's, let's clarify something here. Electricity and energy are actually two different things. Right, electricity is a subset of energy. Exactly. Energy encompasses all things. Fossil fuels, right. nuclear, Gasoline, wind, right. solar, energy. hydrothermal, uh, water, hydroelectric. Uh, so 10% of the electricity demand is not 10% of the energy demand. That's right. All right. So when you break it down, of the total energy demand, now this is energy, right. we're talking energy, coal right now is 35%. Yeah, that's coal, a, that's a big Coal number. alone carries 35% of the number. global energy demand. That's a big number. Now, conversely, wind and solar provide 36% of 12% right. that's provided by all of the renewables. So. 
12% right now of the total energy demand globally, 12% is provided by wind, solar, water, mm -hmm. geothermal, and biomass. Right. So if you actually break those down, you'll find that solar, for example, is probably 1%. Yeah. Solar okay. is still a you small know, solar, you know, All tiny percentages of the overall, overall yeah. energy balance budget. Yeah. Okay. So, worldwide. Yeah. Solar and wind. And when you factor in the energy needed to produce the wind and solar components, it's even less yeah, because I they're just, consuming right, some right. of that it, energy themselves. It's not particularly efficient. No, it's not. You know, energy, uh, coal, fossil fuels, uh, gas, all of those things are energy. And when you hear these people talk, when you hear these people get up in front of these crowds like Greta Thunberg yeah, well, uh, and, and some of these others. Why anybody's listening to a 16-year-old or 18-year-old well, autistic girl, you know, who just gets up there and scolds everybody. How yeah. dare you? You yeah. know, why does that carry any weight with anybody with it, a brain? It baffles me. Yeah. And, you know, Al Gore. Again. Uh, well, you know. John Kerry. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> He's not yeah. 16 year old, years old or autistic, but he's got about the same, you know, uh, well, uh, intellectual horsepower he, as far as I can tell. He absolutely does. You know, the projections, you know, they're talking about 2030. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've we got to get rid of fossil fuels by 2030. Yeah, impossible. Well, let me say this. The projections are this. This is how unrealistic this is, and this is how, this is how they ignore facts and live in some sort of cartoon fantasy it's world. Super bubble, yeah. By 2050... By 2050 now, not 2030, but by 2050, renewables, that includes wind, sun, water, geothermal, biomass. All of these renewables will make up just under 20% of the global energy demand. Now, that's right. on track with what they're projecting the demand will be. Right. So, we're just going to shut it down. Exactly. So we're going to go to one fifth of our energy consumption. Yeah. Uh, one fifth. Uh, yeah. So yeah. right. Which of course isn't going to happen no. because, I mean, you've alluded to it, but nowhere in the discussion has been an, expli an explicit reference to nuclear. If any of these things that need to happen really needed to happen, if we were truly under threat of global catastrophe because of a carbon, you know, CO two, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I mean is just uh, just contradicts common sense. But right. There's lots of reasons that you can you can prove that that's just not the case. We'd be going nuclear. Heavy we nuclear. We would. I mean, well, you know, it's funny you mention that because we do have two individuals, uh, one who's ob especially obnoxious on the global setting, mm -hmm. and one who's not so obnoxious, um, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, and I'll let you pick out the obnoxious. I was going to say, it's a little bit of a, it's a splitting hairs there. <laughs> but both of them have invested heavily in a nuclear, nuclear power nuclear, plant yeah, right. to be built in, I believe, Wyoming. Well, what they know, I mean, they're, they're subscribing to a variation of a statement I like that I think I, I use a lot, and it's that that which can't continue won't continue. They know yeah. for, with one, as, as, uh, as John McLaughlin used to say, with 100% ontological certitude, <laughs> they know, okay, for a fact, that there is no way that we will not have to either resort to nuclear yeah. or some of these other traditional energy sources. It's simply not physically, scientifically, it, you know, possible that's right. to replace all the current, you know, this 100-year-old uh, technology, which is very well established and very, very uh, mature and sophisticated and efficient. You're not going to replace that overnight with something that really doesn't even work no. very well. It's unreliable. And, and then one aspect that none of them think about is, you know, this, this phone right here. Yeah. This, this phone right here, yeah. the, uh, the top on this desk. Mm -hmm. All come from petroleum the, byproduct. The, this, this remote control yeah. lane over here. Yeah. All of those go away. Right, that's when, right. When you do away with fossil fuels, all of those go away. That's Guess right. what? The packaging that your meat comes in in the store. Right. That's gone. Right. I don't think people realize really what an amazing array of products and technologies have arisen out of our exploitation uh, and that's what human beings do because yep. they're the smartest animal on the planet is they are able to engineer and manipulate the environment to their advantage. Yep. And until they figured out what you could do with oil, it was a nuisance. It was a pollutant. It was nasty. It bubbled up on land that was land that was saturated with oil was judged as, as worthless. Yeah, okay? exactly. And now 
most things of value have some connection to the fossil fuel industry. Absolutely. And do. people are very, very, very ignorant of that. And if they really think they want to live in a world, uh, and, and you have to ask yourself, why this, you know, why this why this panic to push on, oh, yeah. we've only got so many, because they, the real objective here, it isn't that they really believe that the planet is in peril. If they really believe that, they'd be erecting nuclear, nuclear sure. power plants to beat yep. the ban. Yep. Okay, they just would, that's what would happen. No, they know that eventually, energy technology will, will come to the, come, will, will be developed that supplants fossil fuel. Yeah. Someday somebody's gonna come up with a viable fusion reactor. Someday somebody's gonna come up with a with a with an effective fuel cell. Absolutely. But that's like a, you know we're we're talking fifty plus or a hundred years even yeah. for those things to really yeah. happen. Yeah. They want to control things. Yes, they do. They want to ration energy. Cheap energy is the cornerstone mm -hmm. of uh, high standards of living and 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 the ability to exercise the autonomy and the liberty that we have enshrined in the Constitution. Look. I mean, I'm not saying cheap energy is the source of our liberty. I'm saying the cheap energy, our liberty is the uh, is the source of the. I mean, the, the cheap energy is, is comes from our liberty. Yeah, okay? absolutely. And the two are inextricably linked, in my opinion. They absolutely and they, are. And when they start rationing your access to, to to cheap energy, essentially they're taking your liberty. Yeah, and that's what Ab they want. Absolutely are. Absolutely are. And you know, uh, we we talk about these things, and it's not just some. 16, 17 year old Scandinavian girl that is pushing these things. Yeah, I think she's actually now, I think she's been 17 in my mind for like five or six years. Yeah, she's I think probably she, 30 by right, now. She's still I don't just know. as stupid. Yeah. You know, but. Has, hasn't gained any just, wisdom well, with that age. You know, but anyway. Right. Anyway, it's not just a few individuals pushing this. We have huge, well financed foundations that's globally right. that's pushing the, this. That's the important point. One of those we've talked about several times on here, which yep. is the World Economic Forum, founded right. by Klaus Schwab in 1971. Mm -hmm. Now, it was originally called the European Management Symposium. Right. Well, that sounds innocuous enough, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It? Well, it, well, it's like the uh, European Union. Right. You know, the European Union was actually bumping around since the, the late 40s, early 50s, mm -hmm. under various names in various European nations. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a... There was a uh, a coal and uh, I can't remember what the first, one of the first iterations of it was, but it was some sort of coal uh, conglomerate uh, little agreement there, mm -hmm. and it just grew from there, and ultimately it turned into the United uh, the uh, European Union. Right. Well, the World Economic Forum each year meets in Davos, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Now it's largely a feather ruffling stage show. Yeah, yeah. Everybody gets to see all these these you know rich people show up in their private jets, and it's snowing. I mean, I've twenty five hundred billionaires show up. Yeah, I mean, it's year. been it's been going on for years, and actually, you know, yeah. I don't know if they. I, mean, I haven't seen it in a year or two. Maybe that's because of COVID, but. It used to be a feature on uh, like the business channels, like on mm -hmm. Fox Business, to be on mm -hmm. Maria Bartiromo would yep. go there, and you know yep. she'd be reporting from Davos, and yeah. they'd hobnob with all these uh, elitists who uh, really only made thinly veiled references to a lot of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was pr pretty. Now, as I recall, Donald Trump went there and gave him a, a tongue lashing one time, and kind of well, laid down. he now, did. Another reason was, they didn't like him is he pretty much went there and said, "Yeah, we're not playing that game. Yeah, we don't did. like what you're planning on doing." Exactly. He went. and He said, "You know what? America's, you know, and I'm president of the United States, and America comes first. Right. You know, right. He he want, He said, "Yeah, America's a great place to invest. Yeah, best nation on earth. Yeah, America comes first. Right. They hated him for that. And the thing is, he wasn't saying that." All these other countries are no good. He's actually saying, if you live in those countries, you should strive to make your country the best. Exactly. You know, because nationalism and and borders are manifestations of human nature. Yes, they okay? are. Okay. And to deny that is really, to me, it's not as obviously crazy mm -hmm. as as our denial of gender and and right. obvious biological sex. Well, that's just off the charts nuts. But I guess they figure if they can if they can if they can subdue us or subjugate us with that kind of thinking, all this other stuff is yep. going to be pretty easy. But to me, to deny uh, the, the 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 natural inclination for people to want to have sort of tribal identities, national mm -hmm. borders, and to and to and to um, collect with like minded people. Okay, um, that's also equally irrational yeah. and illogical. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, we've got to take a little break. 
when we come back, we are going to talk a little bit more about the World Economic Forum Let's and what their philosophies are. Okay. So, yeah, you really need to know these things, so stay it tuned. It is. This is the issue of the day. It absolutely is. So we'll be back in just a minute with more America in Danger. Hey, this is John Woodruff with Premier Equipment Company in Rocky Mountain Infield. Been shopping for a zero turn mower lately. You've probably noticed that inventory is getting hard to come by. So come on down and see what we've got. We've got a showroom full. We have a showroom full of Xmark and Grasshopper zero turn mowers. Everything from commercial to residential, everything in between. We've got a good relationship with our distributors. They tell us when we sell these, they've got more on the way. If you've been in the market for a zero-turn mower, come see me, John Woodruff, Premier Equipment. Premier Equipment is open during the week from 8 to 5.30 and on the weekends from 8 to 12. Safe and secure. These two words are simple yet powerful. In order to feel this way, you should know that you have the tools necessary to provide safety and security for yourself and your loved ones. As with any tools, learning how to properly use them is best learned from experts who we know we can trust. Experts who have a proven track record and a commitment to serve and protect. Enroll now in Sheriff Keystone's North Carolina Concealed Handgun Carry class, taught at the CPF Training Center in Rocky Mount. Sheriff Stone utilizes a first-in-class classroom environment and indoor firing range. This ensures a training experience that is welcoming to both first-time firearm students and those with more experience. An attentive staff that takes time to teach students the legal requirements of becoming a permitted concealed carry citizen. In addition, Sheriff Clee Atkinson teaches students situational awareness, self-defense, and skills needed to avoid becoming a victim. As you know, Sheriff Stone and Sheriff Atkinson have committed their lives to serving and protecting. There is a reason Sheriff Stone and Sheriff Atkinson's class book in advance. Come learn from two of the region's most seasoned and professional public servants. Safety and security, two simple but powerful words that can be a part of who you and your family are. Call 252-813-8898. Register today. Are you afraid to answer the phone because of bill collectors? A Chapter 13 plan can help. Chapter 13 allows people with too many bills to work out a debt repayment plan under federal law. It helps you control your debts instead of your debts controlling you. Chapter 13 stops creditors from harassing you and stops repossessions and foreclosures. It allows you to answer the phone again without fear or worry. Call H. Frank Allen, Attorney at Law, a debt relief agency providing bankruptcy relief under the Bankruptcy Code. All right, we are back. Now, as we were talking about earlier, the uh, Davos gathering of the World Economic Forum with 2,500 plus billionaires that show up every year. Yeah, they didn't invite me. <laughs> I'm afraid I haven't gotten an invite ever. Yeah. Um, but that's how this foundation is so well funded because it caters to this class of right, individual. Right. Um, now, the forum itself, as I said, it's largely just a, a you know, stage show yeah the real work is done down the line in uh, council on foreign relations mm -hmm. trilateral commission um, the young leaders that klaus schwab infiltrates into government right but there are some things that are advocated by the forum um, and there's 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 some rather loony things that are advocated by the forum well, as those well need to be, those need to be fleshed out as well though because they, i think that do. demonstrates really all these things are loony it's yeah. just that we've been yeah. conditioned and people have been conditioned to believe that some of them have you know there's a case to be made some for sort some of, of merit yeah. right and they do not mm, no they do not well the forum pushes certainly a new world order 
Right. You know, we hear that more and more. Uh, we heard it with George Bush. George Bush, that's right. And George H. W. Bush, you know, uh, was the first to really go before the American people and say, and you know, that yeah, it's time for a new world exactly. order. Exactly. Uh, but that's what the forum advocates. They advocate infiltration of governments around the globe with their trained young leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Trudeau yeah, is he'd one. Yeah, he'd be the archetype, I think. He is the archetype. Uh, there are numerous others around the globe, uh, all with pretty storied reputations, actually. Well, actually, if I'm not mistaken, Vladimir Putin was characterized Vladimir as, Putin. Is, is tied up with these folks to a certain Vladimir extent. Putin, and yes, was that before all this, uh, you know, some years ago, he was characterized as one of these young leaders. Yeah, absolutely was. Uh, they advocate global controls, and that's global control of everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a couple of the rather uh, loony things that they advocate is they advocate dimming the sun as a means of climate control. Seeding the light, like, like, like uh, putting particulates well, in the, the atmosphere. The two methods, yeah. yeah. One of them is to seed the upper atmosphere with reflected particles. Yeah. And the other one is to equip seagoing ships with sprays so they can create sea spray, which will evaporate, put salt into the atmosphere around which clouds will form. Yeah, nothing could go wrong with any of no. that. I mean, I'm sure all the no. unintended consequences of those plans have been completely modeled, and we know yeah. exactly what would happen if oh, we yeah. did that. That's, oh, yeah. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. They advocate for the eradication of borders. Uh, they advocate for a wealth tax. Now, uh, everybody talks about this wealth tax. Mm -hmm. Even Joe Biden talks mm -hmm. about That's it. That's right. Nancy Pelosi talks about it. Chuck Schumer talks about right. it. The tax on wealth. Right. Oh, but it's only going to be on those who are uber wealthy. Right. Well, have you ever known a tax that didn't trickle down to the common man? Well, just remember man? that when they instituted the income tax back in 1913, after passage of the 16th Amendment, one of the worst amendments ever passed to our Constitution, yep. the top rate was 6% applied to those making more than a million dollars a year, which in 1913 was the equivalent of making about, I don't know, probably a couple hundred million yeah. a year. Okay. And now it applies to people who make $20,000 a year. They have some federal income tax liability yep. on some level. So... Once that foot gets in the door on any kind of a, a wealth tax, I mean, and that's not yeah. a tax, right? just to, to be clear, that's not a tax on income. That's just a tax on your net worth, you know, whatever yep. it is that you have. And, you know, it would begin not affecting most people. Right. That's right. But eventually you'd have a little surcharge you pay, just like, just like you pay taxes on your house forever. Yep. You pay property tax on your house forever, even though you bought and owned the house right. and, and, and have owned it forever and you don't have any children in school, nothing that those taxes go to benefit you in any way, but you're forced to pay this that's tax right. indefinitely, which, yeah. I mean, that's another story, but that's, but that's how these taxes work. That's exactly right. And in addition to the wealth tax, there's always the accompanying transaction fee, right. transaction tax. Right. And you think, well, I don't do any international transactions. Mm. You know, I'm not sending money back and forth overseas. No, but you do PayPal. Right. You do credit card transactions. Right. Every transaction will bear a tax. Right. It's, it's just like your cable bill. Look on your cable bill and see if there's not three or four fees that you don't have a clue what they are. Oh, yeah. Oh, and some of them have the same those arcane thing. names. Well, or an airline ticket. Yeah. You know, same thing. Absolutely. Um, just ask yourself, why would you let these people who are the consummate non-producers, I mean, yeah. they are the consummate parasites, ultimately, Yep. Why would you let them reach into your pocket and take your money in the form of transaction fees and just just shave off a portion of your of your net of your net worth every year because they somehow have concluded that that's what we need to do to, to run the world? It's infuriating. I mean, it is infuriating. Yep. Uh, they also go on to state boldly, and they state this boldly, that capitalism in its current form has no place in the world around us. Right. Now, you know, capitalism, I don't particularly like the term capitalism because it's, it, it, it means different things to different people. Well, for one thing, it ter it's a term that was coined by Marx. Absolutely it, it, it's is. A, it's a term that the left uses. You don't see the word capitalism anywhere in any books of, of the classic books on free market economics. That's Adam right. Smith didn't write about capitalism. Exactly. But what has come to symbolize for Americans right. is free market That's economics. That's correct. Right. Now, in some form and, or another. And that is exactly what the forum is attacking that's right is free market economics because the ultimate capitalism capitalism is simply ownership of the capital right that's right the you ownership own and control. the means of production right the chinese communists are capitalists are capitalists that's right 
just look out at, uh, you can go down to Moorhead Port or you can go to any port around the world and you see the Costco ships. Right. Those are owned by the Chinese military. The Chinese military is a capitalist right. organization who handles all the shipping. We're not talking about the big box discount, no, you know, not Sam's Club not type of place. Costco. Right. Costco. This is Costco. Right. COSCO, the Chinese Ocean Shipping Company, yeah. and it is run by the China, the Red Army, the, the military, communist the PLA. military. That's right, the PLA, the People's yep. Liberation Army. Now, um, Forum also pushes for excessive government spending. Yeah. And pretty much confiscation of all wealth. Right. You know, they want to uh, give you what they deem necessary and take from you everything that they want. Uh, they prescribe austerity measures. They mm. love austerity measures. Well, clearly, uh, the COVID thing had demonstrated yeah. that. Uh, they want tighter fiscal control from a centralized, supranational body. And, you know, they don't even really make very good arguments for why they want these things. No. What, no. What, I mean, well, it, well, it's the typical scare people a little bit about something and then Give them the solution. Well, you know, you'd think from all this that somehow world poverty was up and that all these metrics of, of, of uh, you know, human quality of life were somehow going in the wrong yeah. direction, but they're not. That's they're exactly not. right. If you actually look at the numbers, in every country, even including the communist ones, in every country, standards of living are higher, quality of life is higher, largely because of commerce and market activity. Exactly. Okay, not in spite of it. Well, you know, they, they love to institute these excessive measures. We saw it with the Patriot Act. Right. You know, we saw a knee-jerk reaction with the Patriot Act because everybody was scared and everybody was fearful and they had to do something. Uh, so what did we get? We got secret courts. Right. And we saw how those turned out. And going to the airport is a giant pain. It's a giant pain. I hate flying. I mean, frankly, I mean, I say this half jokingly, but to me, it almost be worth just taking the risk occasionally having something just to well, have to deal with that because the risk is would. small. There are uh, the Israelis do it a lot differently than we right, do. Right, that's right. They've got it down to a fine science over there, well, and it's not all, done like we do it. You really want to eliminate those threats. There's other ways to do it other without impinging on the liberty right. of the American people. Well, one, you can close the southern border because that's we've correct. got terrorists. We don't seem to have an, into we don't right have an inclination to do that. That's a whole other topic. Too. Yeah. Well, the, the World Economic Forum also promotes redistribution of global wealth. Oh, of course. Uh, you know, they, they want to do that. Now, Klaus Schwab, the founder, Professor Schwab. Uh, Professor Schwab. All Professor right. Schwab wrote this in his book. He said, in the future, you will own nothing and you will be happy about right. it. Now, right. that's pretty... That's pretty terrifying. Well, it is, and unless you think that's hyperbolic, there are already things, a lot of the big companies are moving in that direction. You know, Apple is looking at a model where you don't actually own your iPhone. You, yeah. you, you, you get on a plan where you rent the phone yep. from them. You know, BlackRock, uh, uh, you look them up, you don't know who they are, but they're a big, giant yeah. uh, uh, investment entity. Anybody who's got any kind of a, of a savings portfolio or a retirement portfolio probably owns the BlackRock. They probably uh, so. Right. Okay, they, in addition to uh, uh, aggressively not uh, funding and, and, and uh, investing in fossil fuel companies, they have also embarked on a, on a, on a um, uh, project to acquire as much real estate as they can. Mm -hmm. So they're basically, buy, you know, the ne in the next big housing bubble crash, and I think we may be headed for one of those, well, possibly, yeah. a, a 2008, 2009 type scenario. You, you watch who ends up buying up a lot of the distressed real estate. It's going to be these entities. And they're, they're, they're trying to make it so that people in the future will not be able to buy, ha be, be owners, be homeowners. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, well, what they're, that's what one of the goals. They so that's kind of what he's anything. talking about. Yeah. Is that you'll own nothing <laughs> and you'll be happy. And you'll be happy. Right. Yep. Well, really, and let's not to put too, too fine a point on it, but all this is all, fan this is all wrapped up in fancy speak. But basically, it's communism, folks. They're Absolutely. They're talking about a Marxist model where a handful of people at the top control the entire wealth, not just for a nation, but for the whole world. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's the Chinese model applied to the world. Well, that's Justin Trudeau. I mean, he, right. he admires the Chinese dictatorship, right. the basic Chinese dictatorship. Well, you know, we're not the only ones that recognize this. There are many people that recognize mm -hmm. this. Uh, Joe Rogan recently interviewed a gentleman who revealed a good bit of this. Right, right. Uh, there is an Australian senator in their parliament over there who actually read this into their equivalent of their congressional record right. 
And I want to run that video because I do okay. have that video, and it's uh, video one. I always like watching the Aussies talk a little bit. So, Lee, if you could cue that up, this individual completely exposes the World Economic Forum for what it is. And, and what's funny, he said to wake up and have an Australia that they don't even recognize, but, you know, That's already the things happened. that went on with COVID, yeah. Yeah. it's already unrecognizable. So, Lee, if you'll run that video for me, take a look at this, and we'll be right back. Founded in 1971 by Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum is steeped in authoritarianism and Marxist ideology. It's an ideology which is creeping into governments across the world. To quote Schwab himself when speaking about the Canadian Parliament, we penetrate the cabinets. I know that half, that half this cabinet, even more than half, are actually young global leaders of the, of the World Economic Forum. It's true in Argentina, it's true in France, now with the president who is a young global leader, end quote. The World Economic Forum promotes globalist issues such as climate change, so-called systemic racism and sexism, and creating an online digital identity. However, closer inspection reveals the World Economic Forum is an anti-capitalist, anti-free market organisation that seeks to subvert Western values and political processes. And they are very organised and very well funded. Their message is designed to appear harmless when in fact the ideology that underpins it is revolutionary and destructive. They train aspirational leaders in their ideology and help them make connections in spheres including politics, business and the arts. The World Economic Forum has consistently advocated for the harshest and most extreme COVID uh, measures possible, including lockdowns, mandatory vaccinations, vaccine passports and mask mandates, despite these policies assaulting many of our basic liberties. At the centre of the World Economic Forum's ideology is stakeholder capitalism. Essentially, this is a theory that traditional free market capitalism ignores the dangers posed by climate change, and so the government must enforce restrictive policies to save the environment, even if that means less wealth. Why then are the forum's criticisms, criticisms of capitalism always directed at Western nations rather than the great polluters such as China and India? The forum believes that your freedoms should be minimised to prevent the imminent climate catastrophe the one that's becoming coming for 10 years in the last 50 years, by the way. The central theme of the World Economic Forum's material is what they call the Great Reset, which is Klaus Schwab's term for the opportunity the pandemic has presented to reimagine and reinvent the economic policies of the West. The term comes from Schwab directly himself with his 2020 book entitled The Great Reset. In a now-deleted video titled Eight Predictions for the World in 2030, the World Economic Forum claimed that you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, a slogan that hits the same dystopian note as work makes you free and ignorance is strength. You don't have to be a political philosopher to figure out that if you own nothing, the state owns everything. There's a word for this. It's called communism. The World Economic Forum and its affili affiliates shamelessly promote the abolition of private property, a central facet of Karl Marx's demented utopian ideology which led to the deaths of tens of millions of people worldwide in the 20th century. To quote Margaret Thatcher, quote, communism never sleeps, never changes its objectives, and nor should we. No matter how sophisticated the World Economic Forum tries to make the abolition of private property around the world sound, uh, the fantasies of Karl Marx always lead to the crushing of individuals' liberties and lives and the expansion of the state's tyranny and power. It is imperative that we pay close attention to the World Economic Forum and do all that we can to preserve liberty and reduce government intrusion in our lives. And if we fail to do so, the anti-democratic forces in the West will continue to march on and we may wake up to an Australia that we no longer recognise. Australians deserve to know the extent to which the World Economic Forum's influence and infiltration of our country and how far it has gone and we're going to find out. Oh, what a fantastic summary. Yeah, I tell you I, that's the first time I've seen that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah, good summary is. of uh of of the of the circumstances. It is. Uh, you know, he didn't didn't miss a beat there. Well and, and he said something that I thought was prescient and uh, uh, you know, sometimes these little phrases mm -hmm. are, are are good for people to seize on, and I think this is one of them. If nobody owns anything, that means the state owns everything. Exactly. That's, that's an actual, prof that's profound. It, okay? it absolutely is. If you haven't is. thought about it, okay, because that's what that means. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. that's, not a, that's not a situation I think anybody would be real happy with if they really think about it. I don't think so either. And, you know, in fact, that, that reminds me of a, a little video that I've got, and I've shown it before. 
It's called The Essence of Liberty. Yeah. And it's a little animated. Mm -hmm. it's, there's no, no uh, speaking. It's just uh, all written. I'm gonna I'm gonna run that next week Resurrect because that, I, yeah. I, I think people need to understand the principle that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody owns anyone. They don't have the right to own anyone. That's and right. If, and, and if the World Economic Forum says you'll own nothing, right? That means you won't even own your own your labor. life. Yeah, you don't own your labor. You don't, you don't own, own your productive your, capacity. That's exactly right. And that's, and, that's a very dangerous thing. Right, and that's a central tenet of constitutional liberty is that you are the owner of your productive efforts. Exactly. Despite, you own your life. Right, despite a thousand different ways that politicians, okay, have attempted to erode it. And I want to say, too, another thing. You know, when the founders created the Constitution, who did they have in mind? They had people like Klaus Schwab in mind. Exactly. Charles Schumer in mind. <clears throat> okay. Just about everybody in government, that's who they had in mind because those yes, people are organically programmed to want to steal your liberty and your productive effort for themselves and their control. That's, exactly. that's what they are. That's why I have such contempt for them because I think the, the, very, the very impulse to become a politician reveals something about your nature mm -hmm. that makes you highly suspect in my book. Absolutely. And with that, we've got to take a little break. When we come back... We're going to talk about savings and credit. And, you know, we've been told through this whole pandemic that part of the problem is pent-up savings. Mm -hmm. That savings is just skyrocketing. There are trillions of dollars in savings and that people who have money to spend, we're going to see when we come back. So stay tuned for more America in Danger. My name is Nicholas Bellamy with Premier Equipment of Rocky Mount. I'm going to talk about the 1635 Mahindra. The most important thing is the lift capacity is 1,700 pounds versus 1,100. The particulate filter, after 40, 50 hours on particulate filter, this tractor here will kick in a regen. Uh, when it kicks in regen, you're not supposed to have it pulled in your garage, hay barn, etc. Mahindra, you do not have to worry about any kind of particular filter. You don't have to worry about running your RPMs up all the time. On uh, the Mahindra tractor here, like I said, you can see how well built the rear end and it's very heavy cast iron metal. On the competitor over here, you can see it's aluminum. No telescopic lift arms. Come on down here today. We want a chance to earn your business. Are you afraid to answer the phone because of bill collectors? A Chapter 13 plan can help. Chapter 13 allows people with too many bills to work out a debt repayment plan under federal law. It helps you control your debts instead of your debts controlling you. Chapter 13 stops creditors from harassing you and stops repossessions and foreclosures. It allows you to answer the phone again without fear or worry. Call H. Frank Allen, Attorney at Law, a debt relief agency providing bankruptcy relief under the Bankruptcy Code. All right, we are back, and we've been discussing the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, mm. the young leaders infiltrating government, and you made a good point during the break. Uh, let's not forget that Greg Abbott, governor of Texas, is tied up in all that. He's a member. He's, He's an a member. Member, member of the World Economic can, Forum. In fact, you can go to the World Economic Forum website and do a search for Greg right. Abbott, and his page comes up. And I suspect there's some others as well. Oh, yeah. But yeah. the point is, you know, those of us on the, on the right often scratch our heads at some of the things that he and others like him do. It's like, well, you know, he, he, he hits the right note sometimes, but then he does certain things that just yep. make no sense whatsoever. Well, they do when viewed through the lens of understanding that he's a member of the World Economic exactly. Forum. Exactly. Don't know what, what, how he benefits from it, whether he really believes in that philosophy. I'm not saying Greg Abbott's a communist or anything right. like that, obviously. But I do think that these people get in these, in these organizations uh, Probably, again, Occam's razor, probably just because he benefits personally from it in mm -hmm. some way. But ultimately, that's how these people are, are infiltrating. They are infiltrating 
yeah. this society as well. So I don't think it's just you know Australia or Canada. It's the entire Western world, and really right. the crown jewel of the Western world is the United States of America. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think these individuals get into these things to get access to the donor class. Yeah, uh, well, know, that's right. An organization okay. made up of twenty five thousand, yep. uh, twenty five hundred billionaires. Yeah, I, I think, think that's a good insight. Good I think place that's right. to get a couple million here and there to yeah. you know, kind of yeah. boost your campaign. But but at, at a high level of compromise with these people, and again, that's why I don't like any of them. There's, there is no free lunch. That's right. Remember that. <clears throat> now, as as recent as Friday, Friday morning, I heard this report that uh, that the U.S. is awash in consumer savings. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm not so sure with that, about that report because, you know, the February Consumer Credit Report came out mm -hmm. and absolutely shot that theory down. Right. I read those numbers, and without and, laboring the details, it basically says that whatever savings or surplus savings, because we had been hearing for a few years, even before COVID, mm -hmm. was that, well, savings rates were up and people mm -hmm. were starting to, well, apparently all that's been erased. And, and, and revolving credit, basically, i.e. credit card, yeah. okay, debt is, is up massively <coughs> just in, in recent months. Okay, now, that's a bad moon rising. Uh, I gotta tell you, in my opinion. That is a bad moon rising right. because, you know, uh, all of these financial institutions are hedging their bets and saying that, well, you know, consumer spending based on a high rate of savings is going to Pull the economy right. through. Right, that's going to be the thing that, that ostensibly uh, uh, papers over some of the problems. Yeah. That which you know, I, I think a lot of these problems are really deeply baked into the cake. I don't think yeah. they can be fixed, uh, even with a fair amount of consumer spending. That's sort of a Keynesian model anyway mm -hmm. for it absolutely e is. economic thinking. I don't think I, I, I think economic prosperity comes from uh, actually. I think it comes from savings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And an excess of savings. I think people do things with that savings that are productive. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. And you know, that's one of the things that these these organizations like the World Economic Forum. They don't want savings. Right. That's because right. savings tends to ma tend to make you independent. Savings is correlated with autonomy. It is. Okay. And debt is right. It's correlated exactly, with slavery. It's slavery. That's exactly. exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. And and unfortunately, that's a hard lesson for people to learn. It is. Some people learn it. Some Sometimes it's hard to stay out of debt. Well, it but, is. But to the, I mean, you have to buy a house, and you look, rare is the person who can buy a house without going into debt. Yeah. But you probably, if you can avoid it, you don't need to be buying, uh, you know, having Domino's pizza delivered on a credit card. Exactly. Okay. And letting those balances build up, eventually you get to where you're in over your head. Yep. And I believe these numbers in, in the article, and I, yeah. I know oh, it yeah. just from anecdotally from people that I know and people I've, I come in contact with, and. Um, yeah, and, and and I mean, and a lot of other harbingers of uh, sort of some economic headwinds that I think we're going to be facing. I mean, interest mm -hmm. rates are up. I think mortgages are, are yep. getting more expensive. As I understand it, the threshold number, I, I just learned this the other day, but they, the, the, the analysis says that the threshold number at which people will say, okay, I, we can't afford this house anymore, is 5.7%. Now, interest rates, are, are they've been like two and three, yeah. three and change. Mm -hmm. They've been up, they're up around four and a half right now. And, you know, 5.7, look, that, that's not that far away. Not that far away. I mean, my first mortgage was 13%. <clears throat> yeah. I and, that was a, and that was a floating rate yeah. deal. So that was an entry level. The prevailing yeah. interest rates in those days were 15 16%. I remember those so, days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> when, when you were making a house payment and, you know, 90% of the right. payment every month was interest. Well, but on, the flip, but on the flip side, see, if you're a saver, Okay, that was a better environment. I, yep. You know, I remember my father. You know, he had a, a, a lot of his money was just invested in CDs. He'd mm -hmm. rotate certificates of deposit, which at 12, 13, 14 percent interest allowed you to earn a good bit mm -hmm. of money. Yeah. So this, these low interest rates encourages debt. Okay, but now they can't. It's becoming unsustainable. Yeah. Okay, and I, I just think that, that you know these credit card numbers, this, this revolving credit report on what's, I think people could be in big trouble and not know it quite yet. Yeah. Yep, I agree. I agree. You know, on another financial note, interesting development. You know, we had uh, Joe Biden a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago, made a statement in one of his mostly incoherent talks right. that the Russian ruble was in ruin. 
Yeah, You're calling it the rubble. Yeah. Well, apparently uh, Vladimir Putin is smart enough to tie the ruble to gold. Right, and that is that that you know what they they're not backing it. It's not it's right. not backed by gold. But what they've done is the banking system there is offering to buy gold at a certain ratio, and by virtue of that ratio, okay, of rubles natural gas from Russia and all these other commodities from Russia are being roughly correlated with the gold price and this is in turn translating into a sort of a dollar gold exchange value <clears throat> yeah okay and you know price discovery for gold is largely artificial in, yep. in the United States well this could have a huge impact and the United States has enjoyed uh, reserve currency status for you know well, roughly since World War II, right? Bretton yeah. Woods and all yep. the, all that stuff yep. that went on, which is again that's a whole interesting topic. If you ever want to mm, dig into it, you know, Google yeah. and research Bretton yep. Woods and the agreements that were made in the wake of World War II. You know, the dollar could easily end up losing much of its status. Yeah. Okay. And this is this is a big deal. I mean, this this. Uh, the article, the, the many articles, this is a paradigm shift Western media hasn't grasped yet. Russian ruble relaunch linked to gold and commodities. Well, that's not trivial. It sounds, no. it's, it sounds arcane and boring and dull and, and all that, but it actually is um, a pretty interesting development. It's, it's definitely significant. Yeah. Uh, definitely significant. Uh, you know, Biden appears to be doing everything that he can to destroy the status of the U.S. currency as the reserve currency. Uh, and and uh, we don't need to lose that, regardless of what anyone thinks, you know, how guilt-ridden people here are. Well, you know, uh, the I mean, crowd may be. a large measure of our standard of living has derived from the fact that our currency is the reserve. That's the only, re the only reason we're able to print and spend as much money as we are yeah. without it having a, just a giant. I mean, the reason we haven't had as much inflation as we have over the last 30, 40 years is because many of those dollars leave yeah. and they, they're, they're traded in, on, in, on, in the world in different settings where the inflationary impact isn't felt as much. Mm -hmm. But it is felt. I mean, yeah. look, we've had, you know, the Federal Reserve considers 2% inflation its target. Mm -hmm. Well, 2% doesn't sound like much, but 2% compounded yearly for 50 years? Yeah, that's quite a bit. That's why, I, that's why a meal that used to cost a buck and a half at a restaurant in Eastern North Carolina is now $10. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now, if, uh, if you remember the Greek issue a while back, I was going to bring that up earlier. I know you mean yeah. Cyprus and yeah. Greece. Yeah. If we lose reserve currency status in this country, we'll be just like Greece. That's right. We'll have the you know globalists telling us that we've got to introduce austerity measures here in the U.S. Mm. And I fully believe that that's the, the I goal. Think that's, I think that's the objective of the insiders that are in our government right now. It, it, I believe that. That's right. Because the United States has foolishly abandoned its manufacturing yep. base. Absolutely. Has yeah. Foolishly. Sold that to China. That's right. We don't, frankly, the United States doesn't really have the productivity, in my opinion, to justify the standard of living that we have. Yeah. And once our dollar fails to be the reserve currency around the world, you're going to see that, you're going to understand why that's true mm -hmm. in a short, sweet second. Absolutely. Okay, and that's, that's where things are headed. That, again, you know, a mantra on this show or, or, or a constant refrain, that's why they hated Trump. Trump understood yep. that you got to have manufacturing, and he was trying to restore some tiny semblance of manufacturing yep. efforts in this country because really, you know, wealth is about creating things. Yep. Okay. I mean, I understand wealth is a product of the mind, and that you know, what we judge as being valuable is where we put the value. Mm -hmm. And certainly information technology and all those things, but be being, a, being an information-based service economy is not as strong as being a manufacturing-based economy. Absolutely. You need to be both. And yeah. we could be both. We I should mean, be we both. We should be both. Should be both. Okay. Absolutely. And I think if we don't, if we don't see a, 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 a renaissance of manufacturing in this country, and soon, we need to, and, and we're so dependent. Look, we're still dependent. Even after, the, yeah. even after the revelations of COVID, we're still dependent on communist China for base yep. pharmaceutical materials for things like ibuprofen. Absolutely okay. outrageous. Folks. That you tolerate this is largely because you don't know it. But once you know it, you should really, really. take some take some take heart and dig Absolutely. into this stuff a little bit and start holding some of these politicians' feet to the fire on these things because they're getting rich largely 
from these Absolutely. arrangements. That's all that's really going on. Absolutely. So when you go to these fundraisers for the local politicians trying to run for Congress and what have you, ask them where they stand on those kind of things. That's right. Because that's the important that's right. stuff. Now, we're just about out of time, but I didn't want to get this in. Georgia is poised to become the 25th state that allows constitutional carry. Okay. Now, constitutional carry, for those who are not uh, firearms oriented, means that you can carry a firearm under constitutional law, under constitutional rights, to carry a firearm without a permit, right. without a license, with no need to go through permitting through the sheriff or anything right. like that. Now, Georgia is poised. The bill is headed for Governor Kemp's desk, and he has promised he is going to sign it. So they will be number 25. Come on, North Carolina, we need to get That's on the right. stick with this one. I guess New York and Massachusetts and Illinois will seem to be following, uh, right? right? No, no, you that. don't think so? Yeah, what about right. Hawaii? I doubt that, too. They'll be, <laughs> they'll be the holdouts. But, you know, the thing about it, there are no shootouts in these states. Right. You know, there aren't mass killings going on because of this constitutional carry. Um, I think you mentioned something today, you know, that, that has to do with self-defense which is what the Second Amendment is all about, you know, we have that right. Well, we have the right, uh, well, it's in them, well, you know, that's, that's a natural right, which, yeah. by the way, you know, digressing back to Katanji Brown Jackson, she didn't even have a position on whether, you know, people have natural rights. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that was a, that's a red flag right there, too. Uh, I mean, and I mean red in a couple of contexts. Well, she's, she's definitely a radical right. activist. There's right. no doubt about that. But, you know, uh, the right to self-defense is fundamental to, really, every human being. And unless you live in France. Unless you live in France. And I know it's not, you know, relevant to exactly our politics here, but I think it is since everything is global and since this is the world that, that I mean, France is a good example of where things are going. You want to see where the rest of the states are going? Look to California. You want to see where California is going? Look to France. Look to France, exactly. Okay. But Macron, I guess, what's, his, what's his first name? Um, uh, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, Macron. Uh, there, was a, there was a case there where uh, a farmer defended himself with a, I don't know, a shotgun or something. Yep. Four, four burglars broke in, and he was alone with his daughter. He shot and killed one of them, and he's in trouble. And Macron actually stated that he does not believe an individual has the right to self-defense. That, to me, is very, very telling. It, okay? it absolutely is. And that's the world that they want here. Absolutely. They don't believe you have a right to defend yourself. Uh, okay. That's right. Against an intruder or or them, and I, and ultimately the Second Amendment is really about protecting yourself against government thugs. But. That's right. And if you caught the map up there, we are out of time. Yeah, but the too bad. black states were supposed to be green. I don't know what the color issue right. was there, but anyway, uh, tune in next week for more America in Danger. I'm Robert Crescioni. I'm John Gatz. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs>